Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part eight of my introduction to FlowLab series. Anyone can sign up for free at flowlab.io and follow along in their web browser. In this video, we'll add another level to the game and build a mechanism to progress from one to another. To start with, open the Game Levels panel and click New Level. We'll name this new one Level 2, select a background color, and switch to it by clicking the Load button. Now we can create new objects or populate it with objects we created in our library. I'll speed up the video here since this is the same process used in video 5 to build level 1. You can refer back to that one to see more details if you'd like. Now that we have another level, we'll need a way for the player to get here from the previous one. We can go back to level 1 by clicking it in the levels panel. To provide a little bit of challenge, I want to make the door start out closed. The player will have to flip a switch to open the door, and then it can be used to travel to level 2. First, I'll make a door object, name it appropriately, and select a sprite. We want the door to be able to open, so let's go ahead and add an animation for that. Next, I'll do the same thing to make a switch. The switch needs to have two different positions, so I'll add an animation to show the switch in the on position and name it on. To enable the player to turn the switch on, we can use a collision trigger set to the player object. And use it to play our animation. In the animation settings, we'll set the animation to stay on last frame so that the switch stays in the open position. We'll go ahead and add a sound effect as well, and then give it a quick test. It seems to be working okay, but we only want the sound to play once, not every time the player touches it. To prevent the sound from playing every time, we'll disable it using a switch from the Logic and Math section. The switch behavior block can be turned on in its settings. Now we'll connect the collision trigger to the switch and connect the switch to the sound effect and animation. We can also connect the switch's output back to its own off input. Now when its output is activated the first time, it will turn itself off and the collision output will no longer pass through. Okay, that's better. Now we want to notify the door when our player touches this object, so to do that we'll send it a message. The message block can be found in the component section. We'll name the message Open and select Door as the object to send to. Now when the player object touches this one, it will send a message named Open to our door.
At this point, we need to tell the door object how to handle the message we're sending to it. In order to respond to the message, we'll need to add a mailbox trigger. We'll name it open, and now it will activate whenever a message named open is sent to our door. We can connect that to an animation block and set it to stay on last frame as before so that it stays open. Let's test it out. Okay, it seems to work. Now we want the next level to load when the player touches the door, so let's add a collision trigger. and a load level block. We only want the door to work while it's open, so a switch will prevent the next level block from activating until we open it. We could turn the switch off in its settings, and connect the message output to the switch block's on input so it will be enabled when the open message is received. Let's test it. Now touching the door doesn't have any effect, but if we flip the switch to open it, it will bring us to level two when we collide with the door. Messages are useful anytime you'd like objects to communicate with each other, and these same simple building blocks can be used to make many different types of game mechanics. We'll continue on expanding the game in the next video, so thanks for watching.